Hey, y'all, from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There's no hidden fees, no price hikes, no games, gimmicks, or gotcha gotchas. And all of the websites are optimized for mobile immediately. That's right. Immediate. And it's so simple. Start with a designed template that looks great, feels great just for you. Then you drag and drop your hearts out and make the website all your own. Head to squarespace.com slash read for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code read to save 10% off of your first purchase. Let's move on. Hey, y'all, you may be surprised to know that great insurance is available for a surprisingly great rate. You know what else is surprisingly great? When you order something online and it very clearly says that it's going to be a four week lead time and you don't expect it till the next month, but then it ends up shipping that next day and it comes to your house before the weekend gets there. Like truly an elite experience with State Farm. You can get surprisingly great rates on your car insurance and you don't even have to have a special connection on the inside. That's right. You get these awesome rates just for being you. And it kind of feels like you're getting that special treatment that we all deserve these days. State Farm is not just another insurance company. They have coverage that meets your needs for a price that fits your wallet. So check them out today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. All right, let's start the show. Welcome back to the show, niggas. Yeah. I'm Mercedes Jones. <laughs> oh, my God. And I am Dominique Dawes. This is The Read. Thanks for coming back. It is. Thank you. Yes. For coming here. back to this. On Tuesday, niggas. Look at that. Huh, may one just never cease. Well, maybe, bitch, because we're in the today of things. <laughs> and you never know what might happen when we get an email after sending Don't in this say goddamn that. shit. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. So I let's be not. careful. Let's not speak for God. You're right. Let me not count my chickens for they hatch, but still. <laughs> well, girls, it's good to hear you, see you, feel you, smell you. Let's start with some Black Excellence this week. Black Excellence is going to two Black men that created a badass app called Squire. And apparently, Squire has been uh, running the game for quite some time because according to Forbes, next billion dollar startups, it's already valued at $750 million. Goddamn. <laughs> Yes. What does it do? <laughs> All of the things. Shit. It must suck. So the Squire Barbershop app was created by New Yorkers Song Laurent, Song Laurent and Dave Salvant. Okay. So listen to how fancy and um Lawrence like they are in in work. <laughs> don't, Actually don't. Lawrence could never. <laughs> so um <laughs> Wow. Well, we'll whoop, address I know. Whoop, whoop, Lawrence. That. We'll get that. We're talking about black mm-hmm. excellence today. Right. Okay? It's excellence right now. Mm-hmm. Correct. So, Mr. Laurent attended UCLA for undergrad, then Yale for law school, got a job at a law firm. So, already far more Molly than anything. Um, mm-hmm. Worked as a corporate lawyer. And Mr. Dave Salvant, or Salvant, I'm sure, I don't know. You know, um, grew up in New York and Coney Island, Rockland County, got a bachelor's from the State University of New York. And after graduating, became a private banker at J.P. Morgan and a sales associate at AXA or AXA. I'm not smart, but (laughs) here's where I do identify In 2010, they met at a Harlem party, at a house party. Well, it was a house party. It was a black professionals gathering in Harlem, as black professionals in Harlem Mm -hmm. tend to do. It was probably a red rooster then. (laughs) Where was it at? (laughs) Absolute (laughs) chocolate. (laughs) 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 Absolutely. And so... 
They met and they're like, oh, I'm super smart and talented. You're super smart and talented and educated. Let's go into business together. And so they decided to create an app, Squire, which is basically a lot like uh, apps for restaurants where um, different barbershops can use its software to uh, do all kinds of things to operate their shop, like uh, allow customers to book appointments uh, allow them to, uh, I guess, you know, like tip their favorite barbers mm-hmm. and all kinds of stuff. And you yourself as an uh, owner of a shop can use it to do all kinds of things like, you know, help run the shop and order supplies and. Um, oh, OK. So it's for both of us. Deal directly the, with customers. Yeah. yeah. The it's owner like and the customer. Thing. OK. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm not mad at this at all. And so. Now they're rich and ever wealthy. (laughs) And so today we salute you, brethren. You can go to Mm -hmm. becauseofthemwecan.com where I write about this and learn more about these gentlemen and the app that they created, which would be helpful to me specifically because I'd much prefer to deal with apps when it comes to booking uh, barbershop things uh, than, you know, taking these uh, cards that niggas still be pulling out of their, Mm -mm. you know, back pockets and wallets and stuff like that and expecting me to text them like you're not going to be high and not know what the fuck I'm talking about anyway. So You're going to forget. Let's just get to something efficient and just do what we need to do no word on if um either one of these gentlemen are single or looking ladies and gentlemen so everybody get into that yeah. you know don't know that i was just tea. about to say because <laughs> as many harlem parties i've been to not once <laughs> have i met a millionaire at none of them i mean and i have been to a lot <laughs> we suck not one time not one we time suck. <laughs> Of all the niggas I have met in this, you know city. what? <laughs> Lie. What am I? Because we probably have, and the niggas that are millionaires aren't carrying it. They're wearing fucking oh, Nike tech suits like every true. other fucking nigga in Harlem, and right. they're keeping their fucking wits about them. Because we're What's talking about tech niggas that have that worked at law firms and private banked and right. stock bond and um <laughs> and. And Kyle from Living Single. So, yeah, investments. Like, you know, them <laughs> niggas right. don't wear, you know, Gucci Markets. belt buckles. I mean, Kyle was pretty, pretty flashy. He oh, no, probably would have if he could have consistently yeah. afforded it. But well, whoever snatches these niggas up, you know, congrats to you and congrats to them because this is a great idea. Like, you're probably going to get love... DMs from some whoever they belong to. <laughs> please do. Please. Like, oh, no. Okay, never mind. Excuse you. <laughs> <laughs> I will have your raggedy black asses know that that's <laughs> song. Fine. That's fine. And or Dave spoken that's for. That's fine. And the next time you disrespect my household, I'm kidding. Go ahead. And that that is perfectly fine, sister. I don't want nobody else is trash. I'm not calling them trash. I'm just saying, you know. Never mind. Let me. You just. What are you? I'm so sorry. Doing? Not calling y'all. Tra- I don't want nobody else's treasure. I don't want nobody else's king. Okay, I got my own thing going on over here. Oh, so do you? We're good. Mm. I mean, look this. So anyway, shout out to them. Great app idea. I love booking things online. So you and your I really thing. don't like doing. I don't like doing anything that I can't book online first. So congratulations. So the others. thing that you're doing um, would much they be- much love. To um, you, black kings. Let's say above five foot eleven. I have no idea what you mean at all. Nothing in my house is over five foot eleven. Maybe the ceilings. That's about it. Mm. So say nothing in my home. House. Yeah. Oh well, you know there are lots of things in the world, you friend. Don't have but the, again, come to your house. <laughs> I might all no, but so. That is uh, completely irrelevant to this beautiful heartwarming story about these brothers. I love to hear it. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about you. But what about me? Let's talk about whatever you got going on. Well, who are you entertaining down there in Florida? The good Lord Jesus. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. Is that what they call them now? Mustafa <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Why Mustafa? And Link. Huh, okay, whatever you say, I'm gonna let that go. I mean, it's the facts. Yeah, me too. It's the facts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, 
All right. Good for them. What lovely story. Moving on to our section of pop culture, which is titled Hot Tops. Dush. You got to dush. Come on now, dush. You got to dush until you get it right, dush. That's all I can come up with when I walk over here. So. Oh, the memories that springs back. <laughs> um, couple of things this week. None of them particularly um, interesting or um, bunch of desirable to discuss, but they happened. And mm-hmm. here we are to talk about them. Yeah. That's the only requirement. Yeah. <laughs> so. First things first. Um, Jay-Z joined Instagram for approximately uh, 20 hours. Um, Beyonce finally followed someone on Instagram. Mm. Her husband. And yeah, that's what y'all said. <laughs> um, ooh, not even 20. A smooth half a day later. This nigga was gone. Now, this, to me, I'm feeling like, you know, this feels like it had blue ivy all over it. (laughs) What, the subsequent closing of the Instagram account? (laughs) Probably both. Um, It feels like she probably stepped up and was like, it's cute that you feel above this. Mm -hmm. It's cute that you you feel better. Um, than engaging. We have a fucking right. film to to promote. We have a right. soundtrack to promote. Doll baby, let's uh, double tap some photographs, namely your wives. Now, I've already got you set up with an, uh, a handle, a password, and a login. All you need Lord. to do is go ahead and, and hit the buttons. And so uh, things launched... And, you know, I don't know, nigga probably took a nap or laughed or something. I don't know. Just completely scoffed at the idea. You know, when you go to your parents with something and you're just trying to, like, show them, hey, here, this is, like, the new cool thing. And, like, let me introduce you to how these things work. And they mock you Mm -hmm. for being interested in something that they find stupid and hurt. I do. I don't even know why I I was talking to you about this bullshit in the first fucking place. Mm -hmm. That's what this gives me. That she, okay. like, tried to explain to him what a reel was. <laughs> and then he made a dad joke and, and she was, was like, you know what? Close it all down. Just Forget actually it. shut it the fuck down. Forget it. Right. I don't want to talk to you He was probably, anymore. y'all probably hit him up with thousands upon thousands of brunch requests and um, adv- advice requests. Like, I just want to mm. pick your brain real quick, hove. Like, y'all probably... Yeah. Between that and what was certainly any assortment of genitals being thrown in his direction, I'm not surprised. I actually didn't even hear that he joined Instagram until it was over. And it was the headline was literally Beyonce followed somebody, but then he deleted his account. So fuck that. Like, oh, okay. It's also y'all, y'all ran that man right off that app. It's, it's a good thing. It is. It's also very likely that Blue was like, you know what? We need somewhere else to direct these brunch requests. Mm. It's never going to happen. We all know it's, it's never, never going to happen. Right. But by the power of the meme, somehow I'm still getting emails about you going down. <laughs> Shut it down. To Dallas BBQs. Like, I'm not doing this. So what we're going to do is we're going to funnel it into the Instagram. And I'm not going to talk to you about it any further. Great. Good evening. So um, that happened. Right. Um, What else do we have here? There's a new Fast and the Furious uh, film coming out. The finale... <sighs> Oh, the, okay. Woof. All right. What is this? Like the tenth one? Yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. Is it literally the tenth? Yes. Holy God. Yes. Why? Yes. Why are the ten of these? Yes. <laughs> ten of these movies, ten really? Of them. And do they not all just revolve around niggas driving very, very fast? And furious. And that's it. Like the 
Okay. I mean, clearly it resonates because they made 10 of these, but I cannot understand the appeal. Now, we've spoken about this from the rock beef to, you know, Tyrese misspelling things and, mm-hmm. oh, logging on when he didn't need to. Um, we've spoken about, uh, I believe, Paul Walker's desire to have um, Fast and the Furious go to 10 uh, movies. Oh, we probably have. I think he passed away. Some, uh, I think Fast yeah. 5 was the last film that he did. Wow. Um, you know I don't you know I do not know <laughs> yeah I, I mean of course I, I'm not asking you <laughs> it's like I'm googling <laughs> to be certain Um, but yeah I with all due respect I feel like if that man was still alive even he would have been like it's fine you know at some point <laughs> um like, girl, I was just talking. I said, yeah, I was, I was excited. You know, we're, it's, it's cool. But that was his wish. And that is what they are respecting. And honey, y'all go to the theater. So one thing about it is who produces these motherfuckers? Universal pictures. Don't give a fuck. If it was 10, (laughs) 20, 30 of them things, if y'all are coming out to the movie as a fast family, they will, they will continue. I don't know how many motherfucking more things they could drive a car off of, girl, but they're going to do it. (laughs) And it doesn't matter how terrible it is. It doesn't matter if there's no real plot. Otherwise, I don't know. It doesn't matter if the acting is awful. If y'all buy tickets, they will continue to make it. At so, this point, they so have to just be riding Cheetah or something in the last one. They're probably going to put Michelin tires on like a woolly mammoth and ride that. Because what's left? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> what's left? The fact that I was about to Google Cheetah because I thought it was some kind of... <laughs> no, I mean a living like, jungle right. beast. <laughs> right. Because what else can they do? I don't know if they've. I don't know. I don't have. They I heard they've gone to space. (gasps) No, shut up. I heard the last one. I heard space space was involved in the last one, which I thought that they would save for for ten. But like, of course, they didn't save it for ten. If what why I was told about space is true, because what else? What else can you do? Fast and furious. At this point, they have to just drive a car. Like down Michelle Rodriguez's throat, like someone they just, have to just like ride through like Vin Diesel's cleavage. What's do left? Have, do they have enemies? Who are they constantly going up? That's against the in other all thing. Movies? They're also like the GI Joe, or like <laughs> are they government employees? Who are they constantly? Like, oh, okay. Okay. All right. Wikipedia. What was so, that yes. that show called? SWAT cats. They t- team up to bring down drug lords, automobile hijackers. Yeah, they're like the SWAT cats. Um, this one looks like he just went to Tokyo to have fun, and there wasn't any real. So conflict. I'm gonna. Th- I I tried. I <laughs> I said at one point that I wanted to um, watch all of them. Even knowing that Bow Wow's in them, Ludacris and and Tyrese and everybody, and yeah, <sighs> who shot John? And so, um, <laughs> that's what my mama would say when mm-hmm. she didn't know who else to say. And so, um, I said I would try to get through them to understand why people are still rushing to go and see these movies. And I think I, I. Definitely didn't make it to five. I think I finished four. And then I was like, I have to watch something else. I have to. I, oh, yeah. I will go insane. And I feel you. Um, it wasn't even that they're terrible. I mean, but it wasn't that. It was <laughs> it's not just, that they're not. It was just like, either. oh my, okay, and the cars are fast and and brooding and testosterone and 
I guess. Um, and that's it over and over. <laughs> uh, underworld crime. Right. Like I'm not <sighs> interested. I don't really care. I feel you. That is exactly how I felt trying to get through them Harry Potter movies. Like, girl, get you me are- out of here. So there has to be something else I can do. And the problem like, about your disrespect is that it's Woo! it's late, Christ. it's unfounded, it's it's not it's it's it's, it's not. reckless. It um, isn't. it's hurtful. It isn't. It's just it's incredibly it just um ah uh, mm-hmm. it's it's spiteful. It's, it's poisonous. It's okay. venomous. Mm, um, that's what. That's what poisonous um, means. Yeah. But, you know, it may be hurtful and it definitely is late, but it's not wrong. It's not wrong is the problem. I'm not wrong. So (laughs) a smooth decade late, but I'm not wrong about this. So they're just awful movies. And so I understand completely. Vin Diesel said the following on Instagram (laughs) to The Rock. My little brother, Dwayne. I forgot Vin Diesel was like older. The time has come. The world awaits the finale of Fast 10. That sentence con- confused me because <laughs> wouldn't it just be the finale of, like, Fast? Of the series? <laughs> right. Not the finale of Fast Do 10. Do they refer to the, the series as Fast 10 since they always knew it would be 10? Maybe that's Maybe. what it is. I'm not a part you of. You know, the I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him right. I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. At best, I'm like an acquaintance of a friend of the family. So oh, I don't no, know. I'm not. I'm a complete stranger to the family. I don't know nobody. I'm not a play cousin or nothing. I don't know shit. I don't even think I've seen the first one. I live on the south side, and they're like. <laughs> East side of I live in a whole other state. <laughs> Never heard of it. As you know, my children refer to you as Uncle Dwayne in my house. There's not a holiday that goes by that they and you don't send well wishes, but the time has come. Is that it again? Oh, Christ. This is so Both dramatic. times with ellipses. Sickening. Legacy awaits. <laughs> <laughs> They're having fun. I told you years ago that I was going to fulfill my promise to Pablo. I swore that we would reach, I assume that's Paul. I swore that we would, one of y'all will tell me, we would reach and manifest the best fast in the finale that is 10. Yeah. Yeah. I say this out of love, (laughs) but you must show up. Do not (laughs) leave the franchise idle. You have a very important role to play. Hobbs, Dwayne's character can't be yeah. played by no other i hope that you rise to the occasion and fulfill your destiny now oh if you guys God. remember like <laughs> like girl <laughs> You know that like this is so dramatic. after rapping or maybe even during production when they have a they have like a break, they like drive into the desert and do peyote and like cry and like rage to fucking they like must. little dragon or something. Like okay. this is so spiritual mm-hmm. for a movie about Hot Wheels. Right. <laughs> like I on the one hand, I do appreciate how um, how much Vin Diesel really seems to be connected to this project. And I don't know if it's because it's grossed over $6 billion and mm, it has largely been, you know, his bread and butter for a while, or if it's because he really has a love for the fast family, like clearly enough of y'all take that seriously enough. I think that's really it. So, but, but like he literally does not have to do anything. So the language yeah. here is comical to me as a non fan, because it sounds like you are, pretty much begging this man yeah. to please come collect a fat ass check yeah. to do what he does in every other movie. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so. That's what's happening. And again, I oh, I have okay. the films like I bought a box set. Don't just let wow. me have this. You bought these movies? I bought, bought seven. It was the f- one through seven. Um, but you don't even leave me even like alone them? to okay. I just <laughs> okay you got it did a thing and so that happened and again I made it to four I'll try again 
Because I don't know why The Rock's character needs to be present. All I know is, like, remember they had that beef where it was like, oh, you shouldn't do a spinoff. And he was like, girl, fuck, what's, I don't care what the fuck about that. You know how yes. much money they offer me and to do did this it goddamn anyway. movie, bitch, right. And so he did it anyway. And then everybody was upset with him. And mostly Tyrese. Well, Tyrese was the most vocal about his being upset. But Vin Diesel was also notably upset. But then they made peace. And now he's begging him to come and do this last movie. Even though The Rock... I mean, does the man go home? He right? stays in he a movie. He stays in a movie. Right. He does. <laughs> he does. He is constantly in something. I feel like all The Rock do is exercise and work. So <laughs> and it's like, it. I guess if I need to be in this movie, it gives you all the more time to figure out what the fuck you're going to drive these cars off of, girl. Because you're so. going to have to wait. I looked it up and he plays a U.S. diplomatic security service agent. Yeah, I mean, so I, know. I guess he's. Oh, oh, so you did know that. OK, I, I, mean, <laughs> I was I trying to help like you a, out. Yeah. I, th- I really thought I was helping. OK, <laughs> never mind. I mean, but is you he? got the, your, your degree and you know every fucking thing. <laughs> but, <laughs> wait, so he's not been in like one or two of these and that's it. I'm sorry. The dramatics here are hilarious. Yeah, no, no, no. He joined the films in like one of, the, I want to say your last two or three. So he hasn't been in them from the beginning, like Vin Diesel right. and Paul Walker were. Right. And like even Tyrese was in the second one. So a lot of them are a family because they really have been around the whole time. For so long, yeah. And then it was this awkward thing where it was like they were trying to get the rock to like understand and respect the like family wishes where the rock was like nigga i just got here i'm doing my job like right. oh, like what okay that's nice I'm like not, i am a stepson at best like if there's anything that i understand it is that is ohana means family and family means that no <laughs> one is up fine so like i get it but what we're not gonna do is like try to set up extra here. right so, um, although I wouldn't be surprised if he actually did do the movie just because it's the last one, I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Do I'm it. sure he'll do it. Like, why not? Especially after this poem. It wasn't even a poem. It was a poem, <laughs> you know? So I mean, maybe he's tired. Maybe he's like, you know, I have kids at home. I'm going to go hang out with them. I've been <laughs> just working nonstop for 20 years and I'm going to go hang out. The rock chill, but is six foot five. Oh, yeah, that's a wall. That's a wall of a man. Yep. Criminy Christmas. Six six foot five and like five and a half feet wide. (laughs) Woo! (laughs) That is a brick. What do you even, how do you even climb that? Oh, oh, I can, I can imagine some ways, honestly. I think I could figure it out. All right, we're going to move on. I'm just saying, I see how it can be done. You might have to warm up, stretch a little bit, but it can be done. Speaking of movie stars, apparently, um, I just found out today that Zoe Kravitz is dating um, Carol Channing. And, yeah. Who's Carol Channing? Oh, Channing Tatum. She's dating, uh, apparently, there were rumors, and then on Halloween, they uh, were posted together dressed as uh, Travis and Iris from Taxi Driver, Robert De Niro and Jodie Foster's characters, Mm, all matched up and mohawked up and looking all 70s, and it's like, oh, look, I guess they're a couple. Uh, I know him from Lip Sync Battle when he did Beyonce and Beyonce came out. You know Channing Tatum. Of all of the things that this dancing white man has been doing since I think I was in at least, like, at least college. I'm looking. It's him dressing in Beyonce drag? Mm Mm-hmm. You are you... (laughs) <laughs> through and through and I've that is why you're my favorite well, i mean you should, don't don't i uh no i don't think 21 jump street's coach not carter really your either. kind of comedy oh you never saw coach carter wow okay i don't think so maybe i did but 2005 please i'm not gonna remember some random white well, boy's face from 2005 i was educated and by the the dade county these... public school so i saw coach carter <laughs> I've not seen any of these movies. So, yeah. 
Uh, I, but great episode of Lip Sync Battle. It was. <laughs> and I mean, Beyonce came, like Beyonce came yeah, out. Nigga. What a moment for your career. Yeah. Woo. Okay, good for him. Oh, he, um, yeah. Okay, well, good for him. Good for, what did you say? Oh, Zoe Kravitz. All righty. Zoe That's Kravitz fun. will be playing um, the latest Catwoman in uh, next year's The Batman. Um, and I oh, would like man. to just point out for the record that that is the only reason that I will be watching this Batman film. Zoe Kravitz is a specimen and... Mm. Any opportunity to look at her, I will take. Um, And Catwoman is Catwoman. Also, I love that Warner Brothers has fully leaned into Catwoman being black, like across media for a couple of years now. I'm into it. Oh, so it's just like, is it canon now? I mean, I don't know what's canon or what's not, but like across... From, like, a few (laughs) animated shows to this film, voiceover stuff, even some comics now I'm seeing. Catwoman um, is uh, black. Video games, they're working with a a black Catwoman. I'm into it. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, she's a thief, so there's (laughs) that. Um, But a hot, sexy thief. Iconic thief, well, and Eartha Kitt was also um, the now that I knew Catwoman. Yeah, so and Halle Berry. Oh my God! Speaking we don't of, have to did talk you about see that? that? Yes, I did. I thought it was so cute. No, oh, I, I it was adorable. No, the video we should talk about. We don't talk about the film, which was right. Oh no, I. I mean, I never. You should. I don't have. think I. No, you don't need to saw do it. It's fine. The and costume I, is the I best mean, part I, about it. Likely will not. I saw Batman Returns. I think great. I haven't seen a Batman movie. You're since doing I was it great. You're doing it. You're doing okay. amazing, sweetie. Yeah. I but, think that's a uh, yeah, I don't, Batman. I don't know that I will watch this new Batman even with Zoe Kravitz in it, just because I don't what? know that I right. I don't know that I like Batman. Why? But you know, because he's a rich maybe. white man that's <laughs> certainly yeah, it's super like, conservative, and also gets away with committing superhero is this? all of the time. <laughs> yeah, like he's just rich and right. beat the absolute dog shit out of people. And let's right. stop with the whole. Oh, well, Batman doesn't murder people. He would never. I mean, he kills people all the fucking time. There's no I way mean, that no one has not like suffered a brain hemorrhage or aneurysm or just like lost yeah. blood or I don't know, shattered a lung or something. And Batman is 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 DC. Whereas I am more of a Marvel girl. All right. You know Thank what? You. you said Marvel and not Marvel. And so I, I did will that take on it. purpose just so it. y'all would calm your fucking titties. Because every time I say Marvel, just like they did in the movie, y'all yeah, have a fit. Talking about so I did that for y'all. That's fine. The point remains. I said what I said. Oh, okay. But, but yes, the point remains. Marvel, first of all, it could be. And secondly, it is. So, mm-hmm. now, you could argue with Stan Lee. Yeah, argue with anyone, especially not her. Yeah. She's dead. So. All oh, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, the, 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 I knew his name, though. Yeah, so. you did. It was. I did yeah, not have to Google it either. It, right? <laughs> yeah. Shut up. <laughs> so. Uh, Lanethia was on uh, a Zoom call uh, via The Real where she had an absolutely absurd nose highlight and then said that she will be uh, interested or willing to return to The Real Housewives of Atlanta uh, because, of course, uh, after they discussed the upcoming season, which will feature Sheree Whitfield, an official peach-carrying Marlo, um, which I imagine will Good come with her. trips to, you know, Phipps and oh wow, possibly, you know, several Crocs and probably a scene Ooh, with barbecue Lord. sauce in it. <laughs> anyway, so she said that she had, Nene said she had some unfinished business with some people, namely Andy Cohen. And she, of course, mentioned how she paid for Andy's baby shower and how they needed to sit down Why? and hash some things out. That's what the fuck I said. Why in the fuck when would you do that? she said that, I was like, that's your goddamn problem. You, you paid you for Andy Cohen's baby shower? paid for that white man's a rich, a, a what? <laughs> I'm 
sorry. I'm not paying for a rich white man to do a fucking or have a fucking thing. Let's start right there. Not ever in my life. Does she? Oh, I mean, no. mm -mm, Sorry. I keep trying to think of different ways this could be okay. And it's never it's never coming out right. At Mm -mm. best. I will no. buy that little nigga a onesie that I says bought straight something. out the pussy or something like that. Yeah, I would have bought something. I I definitely would have sent a gift, you know, a humidifier mm. or a baby monitor, a couple boxes of diapers. Would have did something like that. Send y'all maybe a casserole or something if I'm really feeling Christian. But a good guy doll. I'm not finna. I'm not paying for a rich white man's baby shower. I cannot fathom it. But, you know, all right, Nini. I'm not surprised. Of course, she's willing to come back to Housewives. I've never thought that Housewives was permanently off the table for her. So I'm not shocked. God bless her. We're coming into the Halloween, Halloween, the holiday season. And this is going to be the first one that she's experiencing right, without, without her husband. Her husband. Mm-hmm. So. All things considered, I mean, I don't even know how she's on the reel, but I'm assuming maybe she's doing it. Like, maybe this helps. Yeah, I mean, you're right about that first holiday after losing a loved one being rough. Because that first Christmas after my grandma died, nigga, oh my God. sucked. And she left us gifts, just randomly cried all day. (laughs) She left us gifts, too. Oh my God, no. New... I'm not even going to go there because. Okay, we don't have to do that. But it was like, it was soul food level, Mm -hmm. tear jerking. This isn't fun. And then you have family members who like try to like bring levity or like make it fun. And then you're still sad and then they feel bad because they can't make it feel bad. And it's just no fun for anybody. Yeah. So. Sure. My auntie fixed the play for my grandma out of habit and then started crying. Girl, like what can you do? We're simply people. Right. We're just humans. It's a rough time of year. So if you're going through that, you know, be so many people lost people. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. This is a rough time of year when you're dealing with heartbreak. Um, what else do we got here? So, Toy Lane says words mean things. Boo, boo, boo. Jail means things, too. Go there. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Ask them about what they're doing over yonder. Go to hell. Double XL Magazine um, tweeted a headline. Just in, Tory Lane's unable to reach plea deal in alleged Megan the Stallion shooting case will have to give live testimony. He is facing nearly 23 years in prison. Now, this was a story that was across multiple public. This is what it, literally everybody posted. Double XL, mm-hmm. Complex, uh, see, it, see it, Rolling Stone, all the girls. Uh, Tory Lane's retweeted this and said, the wording of this is amazingly inaccurate. I was unable to do anything. They offered what they offered so I wouldn't go to trial and I declined. It's very simple. And no, I will not be giving any live testimony. Please report real news and accurate facts. Ciao. I didn't add ciao for dramatic fact. It says that. <laughs> he, he wrote are it. Are you serious? Yeah, it says ciao at the end. Wow, I definitely thought that was you nope. being extra. Nope. Okay. Nope. Wow. It says shall. I mean, your explanation still sounds like you were unable to reach a plea deal. Like, unable I, to reach. This is why we're friends. <laughs> this is why we do this show together. I knew. I'm, I was like, I'm not even going to say nothing because I know that this bitch is going to clear it. And you did. Like, Thank you. Go ahead. Like, they didn't say, oh, Tory Lanez fought and prayed and had to have the GPA Thank and still you. wasn't able to reach a plea deal. It was unable to reach means the two sides came together and were unable Period. to find. <laughs> like, God, you really niggas. came up here, like, thought you thinking you did something. <laughs> girl, you said the same girl, shit that they said. Girl, go to prison. It cannot happen soon enough. Go to jail or Canada. Pick one, but leave. This reminded me oh, low-key of when Omarion was like, actually, I'm bringing Bow Wow to the State yeah. Farm Arena. And the girls were like, that's, that's what they said. It's just, <laughs> you use a different just, word. They mean the same right. thing. Right. But they, yes. 
Like you were still unable to reach a, I thought he was about to be like, what actually happened was something that goes against no. this headline. But <laughs> <laughs> Oh baby, why don't you read some books while you waiting? <laughs> why don't you just, just take Suck. a stroll through a thesaurus. Oh. You just, like just a little bit of time. I've, I can't, fathom how niggas be so bold as to continue to use social media like you know good and damn well you shot meg the fact that you are still even online is what is blowing my mind about the situation like how arrogant can you possibly be and now arguing with publications because they told the truth about what's going on like at this point like i would truly like for you to just go away you know what i mean but let's just dive into the fact that you had the motherfucking audacity to come on here with this goddamn tweeted paragraph talking about some I wasn't unable to do anything. Girl, that's not what they said. Why are you wasting everybody's time? It's it's giving a hollered dog. Yes, like un- this is so stupid. I <laughs> hollered I'm so dog. mad because I was <laughs> I knew what you meant. So I <laughs> let it slide. <laughs> But I was like really listening like, okay, so you so I just can't wait to hear this explanation that's totally going to make so much sense. And I'll be like, damn, I wasn't unable to do it. Lazy journalist. No, you were, though. They offered what they offered so I wouldn't go to trial and I declined. Girl, girl, (laughs) that's that's what that means. (laughs) You were unable to reach a plea deal. Like, (laughs) what are you? Shut up. Shut up. What's confusing about this? Like, let me know exactly where you find this confusing so I can break it down for you in very, very simple words. Oh. But I understand I understand this perfectly. All right. Just. Ooh, why don't you just it. go away? <laughs> like, why don't you just it's lay like, down somewhere? The girls don't even be like searching you out. They're not even like pulling up. To, you know, baby foot locker and asking for you no. and being like, hey, a tone, Shay. You know, you be pulling up with absolutely nothing. Much like Crystal just said, you didn't pull up with some receipts like, here's the facts, like here, here's the evidence right. that I have long ab- ab- long been waiting to pull out of my Ethica's bitch and show you that all of you girls were wrong. All of you. That's not what this was. You no. just came on here and so- told us that you don't understand how words work. <laughs> Loud and incorrect. I'm you tired. know, truly admirable for somebody who probably claims to write music. <laughs> just don't. Just words all willy nilly, huh? Just vibes. No facts. I'm not going to do too much with this one. Um, Saint's dad was on Drink Champs. We stand Saint. We love Saint. Yeah, what an adorable little boy. Oh, my God. We love Chicago. Psalm's great. Don't know much about Psalm, but seems like a great kid. Yeah. Um, And so, lovely people. Their dad was on Drink Champs. I... (laughs) Oh, shit. I didn't see this. I had no idea that this happened. So I don't know what dumb assery Kanye said. And I feel like I don't feel like I don't really want to know. But I didn't see this clip or whatever you're talking about at all. So. So this is a long ass interview. uh, Drink Champs is Nori's podcast where, you know, niggas drink and talk about hip hop and industry shit and niggerosity okay and sounds fun. um it usually is it's usually a lot of fun <laughs> oh damn why usually um now what's concerning for me is that um kanye west was permitted to go on a podcast um surrounded by alcohol um He's permitted to, I guess, drink and partake in whatever or just be surrounded by niggas drinking and smoking and doing whatever and talk his shit while dressed very similar to like a nigga Fonzarelli. Oh, my God. And, um, (laughs) 
you know, talk about everything from being half vaccinated, uh, all of the ways that Drake trolls and uh, how Just Blaze copied his musical stylings. Um, um, okay. That he still supports Donald Trump. What? Um, oh fuck off the way the way i almost forgot about that yeah. oh the we all fuck off Kanye. Almost forgot about it yeah. christ Ugh. and also that uh the worst thing he's ever done is signing big sean um <laughs> wait what that's the worst the worst thing you've ever done period in your life like when you die, this will be the thing <laughs> that God pulls out of the scroll. Like Big Sean, explain that. What? Big Sean, not that bad. Come on now. His reasoning, not the Trump thing. The Trump thing is not as bad as this. Okay. All right. The reasoning for him behind um, not fucking with Big Sean anymore, or being upset with Big Sean, is because he feels as though. Um, he knows Sean's family helped to change their lives and that Big Sean and John Legend were, quote, used by the Democrats to come at their oh, boy Christ. who actually changed their life. He considers <sighs> wait, them Wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. <laughs> and he says he doesn't <laughs> fuck with either one of them because he feels as though when he was running for president and trying to be an official... <gasps> Um, presidential bad oh, bitch. No. They okay. kept it a little too All real right. with him. Um, Big Sean responded to this by saying, um, I was just with this man. He ain't say none of that. And this was after the interview. I'm dying <laughs> laughing at you. He also implied that uh, Kanye owes him six million dollars. Christ. Um, and then left it at that. Um, <clears throat> oh, no. I think he also said something about not wanting to be divorced from his wife and then he unfollowed his wife. I don't know. I'm just saying, you know. Is this? At um, some point, we got to help our brothers do better. You know, we can't just walk them mm -hmm. into brick walls and then, you know, for our own shits and giggles. But then at the same time, this nigga be wa having y'all walking around with motherfucking scotch bride on your feet and then telling right. me that, like, <laughs> it's innovative and you just don't get it. So everyone have a great time. <laughs> everyone, like, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Sickening. This was lit. Um, no, no, I don't think so. It doesn't um, sound that way at all. <laughs> uh, Not at all. Um totally do i don't know what the children say. so that happened it's, i mean i think big sean is also next up to i mean he's been asked to uh be on drink champs as well so oh interesting it's almost well like i don't drink champs is hmm. using the drama for her. For streams, downloads, ratings, I'm sure they are. Like, why wouldn't you actually? But hmm. um, I just don't know how to ask about Kanye's mental health without possibly saying something that is like none of my business or overstepping. But like, is this man medicated? Is he in treatment? Is he because this sounds I'm not going to say that this sounds like <clears throat> something you would only say if you were untreated or like manic or whatever. It also sounds like something you might say if you're just really fucking full of yourself, well, I'm not gonna hold which you. Kanye always has been. <laughs> so I um, don't know where this is coming from. It. I mean, besides whatever he did to his head, it honestly seems like the most aware and normal I've seen him in an interview in a while. He was just saying wild shit because Kanye doesn't give a fuck and he's wild. And he just right. has this huge revenge of the nerds ass energy on him where he's just like very clearly, you know, the person that ate a lot of shit from people that he considered cooler than him at some point. And now mm -hmm. he can literally <laughs> have y'all 
dressed like Squidward that one time that he was like <laughs> living in that box. And y'all are like, couture. Couture. <laughs> And that's a power that, like, of course, you're going to walk on, you know, a drunk ass podcast and say whatever the fuck you want to. Like, who's going to check you? I mean, Literally the fuck nobody. But, Except John but, Legend like, and Big Sean. And then you just say, fuck them. They're the worst things that ever happened to me. Right. I'm like, you say you don't fuck with them, but didn't they decide they didn't fuck with you? And that's why you met? Like, this is. I mean, well, John Legend, We I remember specifically that moment where John Legend, like, sent him a text, like a personal text. Like, you were tripping. Yeah. Love you I so much. Too. Um, hey, no, this is awful. And he posted right. it for everybody to see and basically said, fuck this nigga. So, and you might be able to take credit for putting Big Sean on, but you did not do that for Jonathan Legend. Let me just remind you of that very quickly. That was egregious. I get that y'all have made hits. It's been some very popular music that y'all have done together, but John Legend would have been just fine without you. Like, and who the fuck really cares reaching. who you put on either? So just because you put the nigga on and, and led him to some bags and changed his life, he's supposed to look you in the face and some bullshit and be like, yes, yep. run for president. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what niggas want, though. They want somebody to suck their dick. They want people who are going to be completely on their side and supporting whatever absolutely dumb shit they say or do, no matter what, period. Don't say shit about it. So probably these are the only two people in Kanye's world, other than maybe his wife, who said anything to him or people that he like respects who were like, you know, you really on some clown shit right now. This Trump bullshit, you are really on some dumb shit. And it's like not even just, oh, ha ha, here Kanye go being stupid again. Like you're spreading these. What did he say about slavery being a choice? And if he was a slave, he wouldn't have never took that or whatever. Like Kanye, I don't want to talk about this man no more. I really I, like so. ever in my life, really. I want Kanye West to just. <sighs> I just had the big I don't even thing know. to bring up because. I just don't I mean, even know. I mean, he was either talking about Joe Budden being bisexual, so. Joe Budden is not bisexual. I don't know why y'all keep saying that, but I'm sure she isn't. Wherever that came from, it was probably tro- for the purpose of trolling the internet and not an actual coming out revelation. So I don't even know why people are giving that oxygen. But Kanye, Kanye is somebody to talk about because Kanye has actually done something with his career. And yet... <laughs> I am so over Kanye shenanigans. Like, I am tired of this nigga. Genuinely fucking tired. Please don't talk to us no more. Go home and be a dad and just leave us out of it. I don't want to hear shit else from that man for so, the foreseeable future. Um, The Travis Scott concert. Oh, Christ. This is so terrible. Travis Scott had a concert for his Astro World tour. I believe it was the opening of the tour in his hometown of Houston. And the closing. As it should be. In his hometown of Houston. And um Drake was there and I think SZA and some other people and it was supposed to be a vibe. Except people lost their minds Mm. and the folks who had the power and responsibility to curb that behavior, protect people did a Mm -hmm. shit job at it. Correct. So for whatever reason, because I've been to a Travis Scott show before, thankfully one that was far more contained, he was opening for Kendrick Lamar. So I guess the girls were like, this is great or whatever, but not why we're here. Um, but for whatever reason, people um, during Travis Scott's show rushed around in the stage, raging, acting like something from Resident Evil or some shit. And just caused mass like hysteria and riots and violence, uh, stampedes and shit, which led to at least eight people um, being killed there. 
and over 300 people being injured and have been having to be taken to a hospital or seek some sort of medical aid. Um, Of course, since then, I've read that there have been uh, at least three lawsuits, two or three lawsuits. Uh, They came out like within 12 hours with them lawsuits. It was very swift. I mean, that's just like the beginning, I guess. But yeah, Travis Scott and Drake and Live Nation, the concert promoter, are listed as defendants on these lawsuits. This whole thing is insane because like, I mean, when I think of Travis Scott performances, usually the first thing that comes to mind is this gif of him at some show where he has like a microphone stand above his head. You know what I'm talking about? I've seen it. And he's like yes. flailing about and he looks like mm-hmm. either like a, you know, a toddler that's playing Godzilla or, mm-hmm. you know, someone being electrocuted or a demon. Yeah. Your I had my airdrop on one time and it was open to like everybody and I was on the train and somebody airdropped that gift to me. And my airdrop has been off since then. But that is how I know exactly what you're talking about. I thought it was hilarious, but I didn't know if it was like, I mean, it was. But to just be on the train and then all of a sudden here go this picture from somebody who is on this train car, but you don't know who. It was scary, but but a funny, (laughs) funny image. (laughs) No, and it makes me laugh every time. It's. I'm just glad it was that and not a dick. I'm stunned it wasn't a dick pic. I mean, if, if I could have either. I would take the I'd funny rather, Travis Scott picture yeah, than a random right. train penis airdrop penis, pack. right? Yes. <laughs> and my airdrop has been filtered ever since. I don't play them games no more. So the thing about this is crazy is like this concert at some point, Travis did notice that people in the crowd or someone in the crowd was was hurt and like stopped for a second but then continued the show for like close to an hour again even though there were paramedics oh very clearly in the crowd mind you wow. with wow. with concert goers on top of the fucking paramedics truck bouncing around and shit like that like like Sean of the Dead or some fucking ridiculousness. This nigga is still performing whatever fucking like muffled cactus jack shit that he does up on the fucking stage. People are like dying, laid out, can't breathe. People are are, like literally concert goers. People who came to see this man are scared shitless, can't breathe, can't see, don't know what's going on. People are chanting, stop the show, help us. Like, and mom is just still going mm-hmm. for it. Mind you, I think this was also being streamed for Apple or something like that. No, holy shit. The whole thing was weird. A lot of people called it demonic. There were rumors that there was someone going around, like, injecting people with some drug, like, pricking people with some drug or whatever. Um, I don't know uh, about any of that. I do. It There have been like multiple rumors that there may have been some sort of like druggings going on, like whether there were people passing out like really crazy drugs right. or what. I don't know about the like random needle bandit, but I feel like there's going to be more details uh, about this coming in the next in the coming yeah. you know, the days or whatever. Anyway. Um, but wow, Travis Scott issued a statement, uh, via his Insta story where he used a black Insta black and white filter and just sort of rubbed his forehead and spoke about. Oh, it's a video. Yeah, it's a video. He just kept talking about, like, working with the authorities to figure out what happened and speaking out to the the family, said, if you know anything, reach out to X, Y, and Z, all of this stuff. But the entire time, he's just, like, rubbing his face. His eyes are half awake. It looks like he just woke up from a bender. It's it's like... I mean, (laughs) he may have just sobered up. It may just now be hitting him or it may have been then like, oh, fuck, I'm in a lot of fucking trouble. Hundreds of people were hurt. Numerous people are dead. 
Why did nobody tell you to sit your ass down somewhere if you were going to do a video statement? Open both Mm -hmm. of your motherfucking eyes and address the camera if you're going to do that. People are burying their family members. I read one of the people that died may have been uh, 10 years old, in fact. (gasps) So why are you like half sleep? Talking to people about communicating with the authorities. It's weird. Um, I feel like a lot more people, including promoters, security, and this artist, and, you know, even consigores themselves could have done a lot better. I don't know why the fuck 50,000 motherfuckers were together in the motherfucking Houston to see this nigga in the first motherfucking place. But God, this lets me know. God, this is so fucked up. That the sky simply needs to crack open and Jesus needs to do his thing because we can't, we can't just like, we can't be left to our own advices anymore. You (laughs) motherfuckers couldn't spend mere months in the house without going to a rap concert and trampling over one another. Oh, God. And here you go up on stage continuing to do whatever the fuck it is that you thought you were doing. I'm assuming because money. Right. And business right. and contracts and the like. Because let me pull up this shit that um his baby. But there mama has to said. be something in the ticket holder agreement. Something like if the concert has to end earlier or whatever, then oh well. Due you know, to I don't know, up. fresh yeah, death. Anything. Right. Due to the fact that people are dying. And I saw some clip of him telling people to like get that nigga or being like, jump that man, get that man, something like that. I saw saw some clip and I was like, I have to turn that off because I was about to be like physically ill at the thought. Like, did was you saying that? Did that lead to what happened here? Did that lead to somebody's death? Because it's like, here's the thing. Oh my God, this is just awful. I don't know. Like I, again, I feel like a lot of stuff is going to come out or continue to or whatever. Right, definitely. But I do know that another thing people have been saying as a criticism to Travis personally is they're like, oh, he encourages violence and rioting and stuff like this at concerts, a lot of whatever. And it's like, not for nothing, a lot of these younger rap niggas try to like cross a lot of heavy metal rock star isms into Mm -hmm. their performance and shows, even though a lot of their music has nothing to do with those genres and a lot of their lives and lifestyles have nothing to do with that culture, even though rock culture is black culture, but that's not the point. What I'm saying is like, it's one thing to be like, yeah, you know, rage, mosh, da 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 da, and all of that other stuff. Although I personally don't want to be involved in those things. That's mm-hmm. fun for people. If you are right. going to be, though, a performer who has that kind of carrying on at shows, I think you should be double, triple, quadruple more aware of what's going on in your audience and like more prepared to shut shit down if it gets bad. You know, I'm not saying that he should bear the brunt of every single loss or injury that happened there because lots of things should have been done differently to prevent this. It's not all Travis's fault, but I think that the response from him and other people on stage and production was not uh, good. It was not nearly good enough. And his um, Mm -hmm. weird black and white Insta video was also like, huh? And then his uh, baby mama posts, Travis and I are broken and devastated. My thoughts and prayers are with all who lost their lives, were injured or affected in any way by yesterday's events. And also for Travis, who I know cares deeply for his fans and the Houston community. No, I'm not even, that's not even what I want to address. I want to make it clear. We weren't aware of any fatalities until the news came out after the show and in no world would have continued filming or performing. So... You needed confirmation of death to be like, let's stop. It couldn't have been the people just maybe laid out and the, you know, um, constant flashing blue lights or the seas of people screaming, stop the show. That wasn't like enough. You needed to be certain that someone flatlined to be like, oh, this is serious. Like, again, I don't know who's proofreading or saying, hey, post this. It's serious once, like, 
massive numbers of people like are being hurt once niggas start stomping each other out like even if there was some sort of mosh pit even those like you said should be like extra heavily monitored it's a failure somewhere either your security wasn't doing what they were supposed to do or you didn't have enough security maybe it was too many people there and y'all violated whatever crowd mm-hmm. control you were supposed to do. But I saw a headline just before we started taping that said the Houston police chief told them, hey, shit is getting fucking crazy. It's too many people here or whatever. Like, you should chill. This should not happen. I and also this nigga decided that. to go on stage anyway. I'm like, I also heard that, that they so sold crazy. out and then were like, oh, we added more tickets or whatever. You know, so it was like they already knew. Oh, no. Y'all are in what trouble. So it's like, trouble, it's nigga. one thing that it's packed. But then you have people raging, doing the most, and you just continue. It's, it's just, it's all bad. The responses wow. to it are bad. And yep. th- <sighs> money's the least. People talking about, oh, well, he's refunding everybody's ticket. That is the bare oh, minimum. Oh, he's paying for the funerals. Bare he- minimum. Okay. He's paying for the funerals and a whole lot more. He's about to pay for the funerals and everybody else in that family to go to sc- college for the next three generations. He about to pay a whole lot more than that. Because it. how the but fuck? Either way. I, I don't. I think, I think the sheer number of lawsuits and not even just the people who died, but also the number of people who were injured because of y'all's failure to, to enact protective measures that should have been enacted for an event of this size. It is a failure to do that. Certainly, like you said, not just Travis's event organizers. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot of blame to go around here. But once the dust settles, I wouldn't be shocked if y'all come up off of tens of millions of dollars. This is why also no shade, because I like I believe in letting people have their fun and do their thing. This is another part of the reason why festivals can big time miss me. Like a lot oh, of yeah. music festivals can miss me. Except, and I was about to say this, a part of the reason why a Kylie or somebody might be like, oh, well, blah, 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 is because like you are surely off to the side of the stage or in a VIP or somewhere that's nowhere near any of that. If you were out in the middle of that stuff, you would have made sure that they shut that shit down. Right. You weren't in danger, sis. So it's like, right. mm, I'm not sure. But that's like the same type of tea that I would be on. For this exact exact right. reason, if I can't be seated somewhere, out like I don't even want. Girl, I got clocked at, at Megan's. Uh, uh, oh yeah, you did drive the boat party. Yes, and Megan said they won't let her come back to that venue no more. I bet <laughs> they fucking won't. <laughs> the girl, like, and the thing about it is, as well, it's like. While we're talking about the lines that cross with, like, rock music and that culture and moshing and raging and all of that shit, and then hip-hop, fine, you know, but a big percentage of the festival crowd and really, like, rap concert crowd are these white boys that would you would also see at Corn right. or wherever. Yeah. And so it don't even really matter if it's Travis Scott or fucking, you know... Whoever the fuck, Lotto up on stage, bitch. It could be anybody. Yeah. It could be Ashanti. And white people find some reason to crack their skulls into each other in like six feet worth of mud. Yeah. It's man. It is just a horrible story. I really just the worst. And you bringing up Kylie Jenner reminds me of people. Did you see this tweet from People magazine? Where they were talking about the story and were like, pregnant Kylie Jenner escapes unharmed after eight dead and hundreds injured at Astro World. It was like unharmed. It was like, so of all the things that happened in this evening, you decided to talk about how Kylie Jenner is pregnant and is unharmed after this happened. Of course she is. Kylie Jenner wasn't in the middle of the fucking man. She didn't wake up in an ice bath. In the middle right. of the fucking crowd. I wouldn't be surprised if she didn't know nothing about what was going on. Because I wouldn't be surprised if she was tucked away inside of a tent, inside of VIP, inside of another VIP. Like with her feet up, eating goldfish and drinking sparkling Texting water. I wouldn't be surprised at all. And approving so, swatches. So for y'all to be like, oh, well, just in case you were worried, Kylie Jenner is pregnant, but she's just I fine. I wasn't. I was not thinking about I Kylie Jenner, I did not Jenner, think 
anything not of one her. time not one time why would i people are dead bitch i'm not thinking about some pregnant white girl who is surely just fine nowhere and near on the it. first private flight right on out that bitch no i'm not thinking about her what You're it was weird. just like oh my everybody. god yes i have no faith yes. in um in humanity in people um gen z and um alpha beta i don't know whatever is is gonna be after that um sorry and good luck Mm -hmm. um even though a good percentage of y'all are also part of the problem so i'm not asleep don't get it twisted um god whenever you're ready girl this place is ghetto it stinks when (laughs) when (laughs) it stinks um People are sticky and mad. It is ghetto. It is very ghetto here. So whenever you you're uh, ready, whenever you like, just whenever you say so, the asteroid can come. Girl. I'm not coming. I'm whenever, not here, like, whenever it feels right to you, you let me know. I mean, the girls are talking about boosters and COVID pills now. It's it's your will, God. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Please. The day I got to take a COVID vitamin is when I'm done. So. <laughs> I'm getting my booster next weekend. I said, nah, let me go on and do it before the holidays come. Because y'all, I mean, y'all didn't stay home last year. You're definitely not going to stay home this <laughs> I mean, year. And so, right, right. <laughs> so I might as well. I might as well just go on and get my re-up before the holidays come. And COVID continues to tear her stupid, crazy, destructive ass. Like, it's. It's not over. I just want everybody to know it's and your still pack not... of sixty COVID gummies. Oh, <laughs> anti COVID gummies. Every morning, taking my my multivitamin and my COVID. Your vaccine. My tea. COVID chewable. Yeah. Christ. That's where we're going. I mean, and is it what humanity deserves? Yes. Is it what I, I deserve? I so. No. Yeah. But humanity. Me I maybe. That. I'm not. <laughs> Me probably, but like no, but the you little know, baby whenever, in the manger, no. Whenever the Lord is ready to just go and pull the plug on this whole experiment, I'm I'll understand. Not going to. I will them. get it. I, I hope it's not like the day it. before a Beyonce album, but you know, who right. am I? Let it be just some regular day when we're not doing nothing. Yeah, but you know, whatever, whatever you say, I'm not in charge. If I was in charge, things would not be like this. <laughs> Whew. Whenever so. you're ready, yeah, girl, we're we're here. Just waiting. See, we're gonna say that, and then tomorrow there's gonna be like, like the nation's gonna literally crack in half, and then we're gonna be probably like running, and they're gonna be like, "Oh, this is y'all's fault." And I'm gonna be like, "Again, this is what you wanted. How dare you?" If I had that kind of power, (laughs) things would be different. But you know, all right. That's it. Will I still be alive? So, all right. That's it. We're gonna take a break. Come back and. Just sift through whatever the fuck it is that y'all lying about. And... Please, please. Hey guys, the people around us make a huge impact on our lives and life's pressures can cause those relationships to change, sometimes for the better and sometimes for the worse. It is not uncommon for frustration to grow out of relationships with friends, family, partners, co-workers. So whether you're having complicated feelings about a relationship or if you just need a neutral person to talk to, Talkspace Online Therapy connects you to a licensed professional to help you work through it. Talkspace is ready to help you start feeling better with a single message. You can set goals with your Talkspace therapist and develop techniques to cope in difficult times. Talkspace offers individual therapy, couples therapy, and medication prescription services with thousands of licensed therapists available for you to match with across dozens of specialties, including anxiety, depression, and more. Talkspace works around your schedule at your convenience with live video sessions and unlimited messages with your dedicated therapist. Um, you guys know, because I've talked about it many times, that when I first came back to therapy a few years ago, I started off with Talkspace um, just to get my feet wet, get me back into the 
um, habit of talking to somebody and it was absolutely monumental for me. Y'all know how therapy has changed my life. So if you need a little support to help you through the holidays, the end of the year, this can kind of be a hard time of year for a lot of people. Or if you just want to start building towards a better upcoming year, Talkspace is here to help. Match with a licensed therapist when you go to Talkspace.com and get $100 off your first month with promo code READ. That's $100 off when you use code READ at Talkspace.com. Let them know we sent you and let's get back to the show. We're back. It's time to read your letters. It is. Send your questions to asktherita at gmail.com. We may just read them aloud on the show. So we have an update from the young lady last week who um, was talking about her mama and this money situation. Her mama taking money out of her account yep. and all that. So she said, hey, y'all, just to be clear, I don't live with my mother since my accident, it was difficult getting back on my feet financially. I live in Atlanta, which is six hours away from home with a roommate, and I work two jobs. I pay rent, electric, and all that other shit on my own. She bought a birthday car as a birthday. Oh, she bought a birthday car. She bought me a car as a birthday gift, hmm. and we agreed to me paying a quarter of the monthly note. I feel like she's seen me earning more money recently since I started working two jobs and now feels some kind of way about it. I told her I have no problem paying a higher percentage. I just don't want to live paycheck to paycheck now because she got an attitude. I decided I'll either take on the car note altogether or I'll help with the Airbnb, but I'm not going to do both. If she wants to be spiteful, then I'll figure it out. But you won't be the hostess with the mostess with my coins. <clears throat> However, I haven't told her about all that just yet. And honestly, I'm going to try to avoid the condo because she the convo because she has already set up my full car note to come out of my account this month. I did what you said, Crystal, and created a new bank account where the funds are now resting. Wow. Thanks for your advice. And I don't remember the fake name we gave her, so I'm going to avoid her real name. But um, I'm glad to hear that you don't live with her. I'm glad that the advice about, you know, opening a new account was useful for you. And again, sorry that you went through that. Parents can, you know... Like I say all the time, parents are just people and they are frequently very fucked up. So, um, but yeah, thanks for the update. Let's dive right into our first letter this week. It comes from Ashley, who says, my boyfriend and I are both 33 years old. I'm an accountant making $80,000 plus commission and I work 10 to 12 hours a day. Mm. My boyfriend makes about 40K. He is a musician and works about 10 hours a week. He sleeps all day and stays up all night playing video games. When we moved in together three months ago, I agreed to paying $1,100 a month for rent while he pays the remaining $400 because I make Oof. more money than he does. Gr the, yeah. I thought that he wasn't working because of COVID, but now I realize that this is just his lifestyle. He thinks that I'm because he can pay his portion of the rent that he shouldn't get another job doing something he hates when he can continue doing what he loves. He thinks that if he gets a check, he thinks that if he gets a steady job during the week, that it could interfere with a random gig, which in turn would be a missed opportunity. On one hand, he makes, <laughs> he makes about a hundred dollars an hour. And since he doesn't have a degree, he would have to work a full day at a regular job to make that much. He is white and he does come from a rich family, but they don't help him financially. Girl! I admit that my idea of a man is a provider and I'm starting to think that my boyfriend is selfish and lazy. Am I in the wrong for wanting him to contribute more and wake up before noon? It seems like if I have to suffer and get a job and pay these bills, he should have to do the same. Thanks, guys. I love you both so much. I've listened to every episode. Thanks, Ashley. <clears throat> Ashley, I'm assuming that you are not white. Oh, no, she's not. She's black. So. And paying a white man's bills. I'm sorry. The ancestors are shuddering right now. You mean to tell me. <laughs> you are paying... The bulk yeah. of this man's expenses. Mm -hmm. He sleeps and games and makes excuses for a living. You're not married. Mm -mm. 
You didn't mention children. Uh-uh. Why is this man in your house? I don't understand why, um, where, when does he get out? When does he, when, <laughs> When does he leave the home? Because when he works, when he has a gig. My problem with that bullshit is oh no. That should not prevent you from getting a better job, bigger job, working more hours, doing whatever to just you know what I'm saying, okay. like hold your own weight, balance things out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you're talking about a gig that could come up, when I hear the word gig, yep. typically I think of an opportunity, which may be great, but will also likely be uh, temporary, many times mm-hmm. uh, very short lived, yep. sometimes just a day. One night only. Yep. Yep, that's right. So, how is that stopping you from going down and filling out applications, doll, baby? I don't understand why you can't do more. You can, you don't want to. And this is what the fuck I be talking about. Y'all be out here, motherfucking, paying these niggas, feeding these niggas, sucking and fucking these niggas. Yep. Clothing these niggas, birthing their babies, raising them, doing all of these goddamn things. And a nigga won't even wipe his ass. Mm. (laughs) I don't. Mm. And this is a white. I'm done talking to you. (laughs) Oh, Ashley. I don't oh, understand. I, so, <laughs> I, so the question that you're asking at the end of this letter, am I wrong <laughs> for wanting him to contribute more and wake up before noon? No. That's not what you're wrong about. You're not wrong for wanting that, but you are wrong for agreeing to it. There because there it is. three months ago, when y'all moved in together, Y'all's rent was $1,500 and you agreed to pay $1,100. That's where you fucked up. You're not wrong for wanting somebody who works regularly or makes more money or gets up and does something with themselves. But you agreed to do this. I think that is that was your crucial mistake here. He he thinks so you said that like he thinks because he can pay his part of the rent, he shouldn't have to do a job doing something he hates. I mean, and that's the thing. He doesn't like, he doesn't have to do something he hates. He doesn't have to push himself in any way because somebody is going to take care of the bulk of his expenses so that he can sit around and play video games, stay up late, smoke weed, work whenever the mood strikes or whenever an opportunity comes up and still be just fine. And even when he didn't have you to lean on, he had his rich family in the background. You said they don't support him. I don't know if he don't talk to them or if it's just like, I don't want any help. Mom and dad, I am a girl grown up. I don't know which one that is, but either way, he always had a safety net and it just is like you're his safety net instead of his family. So... You can always um, change your mind. You can always say, I thought that this was going to be a lot more acceptable. And now that I see that, you know, I I have to sacrifice so much. I get up early. I'm at work all day. I make, I work 10 to 12 hours a day, come home and here you are and you done left pork and bean juice on my countertops and it's dirty socks all over the place and you just got up three hours ago and you haven't even showered yet today like (laughs) you can always say I'm not happy or I'm not satisfied or this isn't what I want out of a long-term partnership but 
you know, you also have to take accountability because you willingly went into a situation knowing that you would be paying more than twice, nearly three times what a white man is paying for rent. I just don't know. I really don't know how that you swallowed that in the first place. I don't know how that ever seemed like a good idea. I don't know how that ever sounded like something tolerable to you. If I was moving in with a white man, a white man, I can't actually I truly fathom having a fun. job at all. I can't even imagine having a job. If the nigga was <laughs> no. yellow with purple polka dots, I'm paying I'm doing $1,100. It. You're paying $400. So that a man nigga. can sit down? A man? I don't girl, give a fuck girl, if the girl, nigga was oh, a dragon. You motherfuckers be dating <laughs> Phil and Lil. And then you are like gagged when they have toddler tantrums. Everybody's confused. I don't feel sorry for none of y'all. You both of you niggas need to speak to licensed uh, professionals. Mm-hmm. Because the yeah. fact that you, the fact that you agreed to this and put yeah. this bitch in the position to even look at you cockeyed and be on some uh, well, <laughs> I don't understand that because if I go get a job, then what about a gig? What's 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 going on? What's wrong? Because a gig What's could be his big break. And, and I don't give a, a fuck about his you have big to be break, a little break, medium break, break venti, latte, grande. I don't give a fuck what I don't care. I'm talking about you, sis. Ashley, what's wrong with you? What's what's mm. where? Who failed you? Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's get into it. Because how wrong. did we get here? For anybody. But the fact that you are looking at a white man. Mm-mm. 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 No, ma'am. No, ma'am. It's not no, too ma'am. late to get out. It's not. Now, y'all just moved in together three months ago, so you probably have another nine months on this lease. But luckily... I mean, he you should know, get out. It's your home. Yeah. You having a full-time job and <laughs> an actual salary... Uh, can probably cover that fifteen hundred all by yourself, no problem. Like he's only paying four hundred, like, uh, and I bet you paying all the utilities too, girl. I bet you are. Ooh, uh, uh-uh. uh. Oh my god. My thing is, I love uh, entrepreneurship. I love creative oh, yeah. energy. How I can love we not? People who wa- right? Who want to like do their own thing and make their own thing and all that other stuff. Um. However, at the same time, when you're in a relationship, especially if you are living together, sharing expenses of any kind, give and take is just unfortunately a part of the formula. And I personally would not have so much of a problem um, doing a bit more supporting than my partner who is a creative or whatever trying to like get a business off the ground. If I see that you are Mm. working your ass off to make that stuff happen. If all, if all you can do is 400 out of this 1500, but you busting your ass losing sleep, like my motherfucking ass was doing in and out of college, high school and shit like that. Working full time, going to school full time, losing sleep, editing videos at five o'clock in the motherfucking morning, doing all of that shit. If I see you doing that, then I'm not going to have as much pressure for you, if any. But what you're not going to do is sleep until Judge Judy come on and then play a couple of rounds of 2K and Call of Duty and then talk to me about a gig. Get out of my house. Yeah. While I'm at work all day? Because here's the thing. You can go and do that wherever the fuck you going to stay and I can pay my rent in my apartment. Right okay, here, where I stay. And then where you're per- when you're permitted to come over... Great. Yeah. And we'll see how long that lasts. But I'm not paying your rent, sweet bitch. That's not going to happen. <laughs> I really can't. I don't. I, I mean, I feel like I've been in love before, but I've never had these kind of feelings for somebody. I've, I've never stupid. had. I, <laughs> I mean, I've done. never had. I'll pay eleven hundred dollars while you pay four hundred and don't do shit. Well, with when your I was this dumb, yourself. I didn't have eleven hundred dollars for nobody. <laughs> so, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> if I did, I might not for me, you, us as a collective. Nobody, not for nobody. Right. So, so thankfully, 
Oh, Ashley. Yeah. You know, you're not wrong, but you're going to have to sit down and have some very real conversations with him. And, you know, if maybe he needs to tap into his rich ass family and have them. And, 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 and then mama has money. Right. Like if 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 the money is available, then maybe he should have his family start paying the rent so that it's not all on you. But again, you agree to this. You need to ask yourself why. I'd be like, Kendall Roy, get the fuck out of my house mm-hmm. and find she, you somebody to play with. This is probably your apartment. His name is probably not on it. Or if it is, it's like. Here is the other uh, person over 18 who will be living here. Like the lease is probably in your name. So, you know, do with that information (laughs) what you will. But I think you need to have some difficult conversations with yourself about why this you you. You saw the situation and decided to to walk right into it. But you can always change your mind, girl. You can always go back and you can always kick this motherfucker out. And move on with your life if that's what feels is right for you. But are you wrong for having your feelings? No, I can't say you are because I feel the same way. And it's not even about him being a man necessarily. It's about him being a partner. I'm not going to bust my ass and be at work all fucking day while you don't do anything. And it's not like you're at home raising our kids or something. You just at home chilling. And that's another thing. I don't want nobody in my house all day. I don't want nobody always Dwayne, in my home. Title, nobody. White so <laughs> men can't pay. <laughs> Send. You know what? Good luck, Ashley. Please, and I mean please, let me know how this goes. Um, let's see. Shall we talk to Bruce, the black gay man, or to Nicole, who has a question about her BFF? Bruce the Black Gay Man sounds like a character on Big Mouth. What was the second one? It does. Um, look, you know what? Let's let's see what Bruce got going on today. Sure, yeah. Bruce says, Hey y'all, I'm a 28-year-old black gay man. I've been messing with this guy Marcus exclusively for about four to five years. Wow. So Yep. Forever. In the last <laughs> right. In the last year and a half, we've gotten more serious and it's been more like we were actually dating each other. Yeah. (laughs) Because listen, he said we've been messing around, not we've been in a relationship. Yeah. In the past, Marcus has brought up being has brought up us being a couple eventually, but he is extremely wishy-washy. So I never took him seriously. One week he would be all over me, obsessed with me talking about where he sees us in five years. And then the next week he would barely reply to a text message and just overall be very distant. Uh, At first I thought he was being a fuck nigga, but then I started to see a pattern with him. My brother has bipolar disorder and I can sort of see the signs. So I kind of feel like I was starting to see them with Marcus, but I overlooked it because we aren't a couple and the dick is amazing. Fast forward to the start of the pandemic. We were hanging out more regularly and feelings developed further. And he expressed even more that he wants to be my boyfriend. I was hesitant because, like I said before, he goes from one extreme to the next. So I was just sort of waiting for the ball to drop and for him to switch it up. I did a deep dive through all his social media to see if there was anything suspicious. And it turns out that he does have bipolar disorder. He admits to it and he doesn't believe in taking medication. He made a comment in some Facebook post about how he self treat uh, about how he self treats his condition. Now, I know everybody has different views on treatment and medication, and I definitely am in no position to tell him what to do. But that is something that that directly affects those around you and explains a lot of his behavior over the years. Am I fucked up because now I think I might not want to date him because of this? He said that if I'm not ready for a relationship, we can continue to move how we have been. But I don't want him to I don't want him to think that it would lead to something. I also don't want him to force me. I'd also don't want to force him. Sorry to tell me about his diagnosis or give him an ultimatum. What would you do in my situation? He doesn't even know you know. (laughs) Any advice helps. Thanks, Bruce. Sorry, I don't know why I fucked up so bad reading that. I completely <laughs> like lost at some yeah. point. But Eyes you, are just Bruce jumping all over the place. But yeah, Bruce. Oh, interesting. You've been spending most of your twenties with this man, <laughs> messing with exclusively for four to five years. It was what had me like, wait a minute, what? 
So you ain't fucked nobody but Marcus for four to five years. Okay. Wow. And you That's interesting. Are just learning a lot. Yeah. Um, but they were just it's it sounds like things were not very deep or intimate. Right. Uh, yeah. Until, just in the last year and a half since right. the pandemic started, which a lot of people can probably relate to. Right. Things ch- switching up when the pandemic started. I mean, I can't say that I know how I would address a conversation uh, like this. Um I mean, because you have known each other for a long time, but like we said, you haven't really known each other for a long time. And he didn't come forward with this information. You went and seeked it out. Right. Um, so uh, here's the thing. You know, when we're answering these questions, it's like, I guess I have to just... I, like I have to go with whatever my initial feeling is and just stick by that <laughs> because like I don't it's not like I have my whole bunch of time to sit here and think um, right. but I want to say that because you don't really want you like know that you don't want to be his boyfriend and it sounds like you may not have really wanted to be his boyfriend in any fucking way mm-hmm. um, that Maybe you aren't like owed or he isn't owed like any particular explanation mm-hmm. about, you know, this topic or this being why you're hesitant. You know, um, you cannot right. be in a want to be in a relationship or not want to be his boyfriend for a host of reasons. Um but I think that, like, if it does come down to you saying or having to be like, okay, well, I'm not trying to date or be serious because X, Y, Z, you could say the truth, which is that sometimes you're hot, sometimes you're cold. I don't really know, mm-hmm. you know, how I could see a relationship working out with that. You don't have to say, I also know right. that you, you know, Suffer from bipolar disorder and don't meditate. You don't have to get into all of that. Maybe he'll tell you himself just by saying that. And then you can discuss how you feel about it, obviously. And the benefit of knowing already is that maybe if you do get to that discussion, you can start prepping how you would respond to that discussion, the things that you'd like to say, how do you actually mm-hmm. feel if you do get to a point in discussing it? But like I said, since you don't really want to date him anyway, like I guess you do, it sounds like you have like, um, like you care enough that you don't want to just be like, you know, go fuck yourself or ghost him or whatever, which is great. Um, but yeah, I think that I would probably just, if anything, be like, well, our communication is not the best, but our sex right. is great. So I'm satisfied with that. You're satisfied with that. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he did say, you know, if you're not ready for a relationship, then y'all can just keep doing what you have been doing. Right. But you can also just break this off. You can also just be like, you know, I feel like feelings are getting into it and I don't want to do something knowing that this isn't going to go anywhere. I agree with Kid Fury completely that you can just stick to the effects that this is having on you and you don't have to make it about the disorder itself. Like Mm -hmm. if y'all are having this conversation, you can be like, you know, it's hard for me to feel like you and I can develop to the point of a relationship because inconsistency is the hallmark of this relationship. Like sometimes you are all up my ass and other times you act like I don't mean shit to you and this is whatever. And if he does choose to disclose the diagnosis, then then you can be like, okay, well, I mean, I get it. It's fully your choice about medication and treatment and what you're going to do. But if this is, if you think, if you feel like you're managing it well now, then this isn't going to work out for me because the way you're managing it now hurts me. <laughs> like it, exactly. I feel like exactly. sometimes you care about me and sometimes you don't. So that exactly. is his choice. And it is also your choice to say, I can't handle 
a relationship where I have uh, where I'm going to be subject to being treated like that. So it doesn't yeah. have to be like, oh, I'm a terrible person because I won't date somebody with this mental illness. It can be I can't handle the effects of this. I can't exactly. handle that kind of treatment. And you are well within your right to do that. I've dated people who have bipolar disorder, all kinds of y'all know that Same. I have depression and anxiety. Um, so I'm certainly not against dating people who have mental illnesses, but we all have a responsibility to take care of ourselves and not hurt the people around us. Exactly. So exactly. If Marcus like, can't do that, then that's on him. It's one thing. It's not like you're saying, well, because of your, uh, your mental health issue, um, I don't want to date you. It's right. like, the way that you are choosing because you're right like people have their own reasons for not for for however they choose to approach right. medication or lack thereof um but the the end of the story is that it still hurts me like it's not right. conducive to us having a healthy relationship it's just not so it's not like fuck you dude with bipolar you freak or whatever it's just like unfortunately it doesn't really work out um Mm -hmm. not in a way that i think you know things could be that serious and honestly like i liked what you said about just breaking it off because it's like yeah he's saying well you know we could just continue to do what we're doing or whatnot but it's like could we because could we if things are gonna get serious as they clearly are it may be best that we just go ahead and chill and keep yeah. things like a, a nice distance, fr- a distant friendship, respected respect, you know, and mm-hmm. just move from there. Right. Without because, you know, with less less in this before somebody <laughs> really gets heartbroken behind it. That's kind of my general feelings about it. But, you know, you are you are allowed to. To take care of yourself first and foremost. And if somebody constantly blowing hot and cold is going to hurt your feelings and you're allowed to remove yourself from that situation. And and, you know, that who can who can possibly fault you for that? Right. So you don't want to make him feel bad for having bipolar disorder, but he can't right. just make you feel bad because he does. You know, right. And even if he didn't like. <laughs> this behavior, this some tiny ass behavior is a red flag for anybody. Exactly. And knowing why he does it, like be or thinking you know why he does it, because maybe he is just like this and maybe it's because of the That's bipolar. True. We don't know. That's true. But <laughs> but all it does is really provide some context. It helps with understanding um where the behavior is coming from. It might help with like not taking it personally or not thinking that it's about you, which is useful. That's a good thing, but it doesn't take away the fact that it's things. So yeah, ultimately Bruce, um, I say have the conversation, make it about the behavior and then, but it honestly to me sounds like ending this where it is and thanking him for the five years of good dick, you know, it's wrap it up in a nice little bow and start 2022. Christ Jesus. Is that the year? Wow. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> where did 2021 go oh, how cares. is it already november <laughs> but you know then start 2022 with new dicks making new mistakes with new dicks is my my motto a mantra um and best of luck to or you. Please. other genitals oh yeah you know whatever i say i say dick to mean a lot of different uh setups oh, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> Let's cut it off right there before y'all start talking to me crazy. Send your questions to asktheread at gmail.com and we'll be right back. So guys, listen, the holidays we discussed, they can be incredibly hectic. There's more staying in than there's going out. There's a whole bunch of gatherings that usually include lots of cooking and grocery shopping and meal prep. It's a whole thing. Thankfully, HelloFresh is here to help keep things easy. They offer 
50 menu items, including vegetarian, calorie smart, gourmet options, providing plenty of variety. Ingredients travel from the farm to your door within a week so you can get the convenience without having to skimp on the quality. As fall transitions to winter, there's nothing better than cozying up with a comforting home cooked meal. They even got stuff like chicken ramen and turkey ragu. And all kinds of fun stuff to make. And honestly, once you like see the like photographs and hear all the ingredients and recipes and stuff, and then you get the stuff and you make it, you feel all like fancy and stuff. If you got some of the entertaining, I don't because you know me. But if you do, then that's also nice and you can feel all fancy and like elite and then, you know, have like romantic Olivia Pope moments together. And it's like really great. And personally, for me, at the end of the day, um, eating is like highlight of every one of my days. It's my favorite thing to do. It's like it, it, it makes me appreciate being alive. <laughs> and so... HelloFresh allowing me to do that in ways um, and with things I normally wouldn't um, while also feeling accomplished and like Khalees. I just love it and I really appreciate it and I'm thankful. So go to HelloFresh.com slash the read 14 and use code the read 14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. It's a lot of free. That's HelloFresh.com slash the read 14. And the code is the read 14 for up to 14 free meals, three free gifts. Go eat something, cook something, have some fun. Let's move on. Hey, y'all. These days, employers are having to go above and beyond to entice people to want to work for them. Did you know that there are over 10 million job openings and only 7.6 million unemployed job seekers? Weird thing to say only about, but a lot of employers are really pulling all the tricks out of the bag, trying to get y'all to come to work. They offer an insurance for your pets, providing discount programs, offering legal services, identity theft protection, all kinds of stuff. If you are also an employer and you can relate to any of these challenges of growing your team, then you need to try ZipRecruiter and you can do it today for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash the read. ZipRecruiter uses powerful technology to find and match the right candidates up with your job. Then it proactively presents these candidates to you. You can easily review these recommended candidates and invite your top choices to apply for the job, which encourages them to apply faster. No wonder ZipRecruiter is the number one rated hiring site in the U.S. based on G2 ratings. ZipRecruiter's technology is so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Now you can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address. It's ZipRecruiter.com slash the read. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash T-H-E-R-E-A-D. Go ahead, sign up today. ZipRecruiter, it's the smartest way to hire. Go find the perfect person for that job opening. And now let's wrap up the show. We're back. And it's time now to wrap up the show. Amen. With the read. Yes. Correct. Take it away, Would Crystal. Like All right. I am seriously not going to take up a lot of time this week. Wow, yeah. me neither. Um, okay. 35 uh, minutes later. Please. <laughs> I am actually going to dip my foot into white people's business. Y'all know normally I stay out of whatever is going on in in Caucasia. But um, I saw something a few days ago that really pissed me off. So Chris Pratt. Oh, um, girl. Not me sitting here about to explain who Chris Pratt is. Y'all know who the fuck Chris Pratt is. Who? <sighs> so Chris Pratt all left behind many series looking ass posted a picture of him and his wife where she's looking at him like she's a fucking robot. And the caption says, she might be. guys, sh for real, look how she's looking at me. I mean, find you somebody that looks at you like that. You know, we met in church. She's given me an amazing <laughs> life, a gorgeous, healthy daughter. She chews so loudly that sometimes I put in my earbuds to drown it out. But that's love. She helps me with everything. In return, periodically, I open a jar of pickles. That's the trade. Her heart is pure and it belongs to me. So funny. My greatest treasure right next to my Ken Griffey Jr. Upper Deck rookie card, which if you know, you know is saying a lot. That it's her birthday in about six weeks. the whitest yep, fucking 1996 Disney Channel original movie ass shit that I have ever... Brink? What? Go ahead. 
So if I don't get her anything, I'll tell her to look back on this post. Love you, honey. Heart emoji. Heart emoji. Okay. So um, the internet understandably reacted. There's so much about this that's just, that is absolutely terrible. First of all, this photo has to be doctored in some way. This background, this couch setup, it's not making a lot of sense to me. Why? Um, I'm looking at it. The, but okay. So is it just me or does it look like they're sitting on two different couches? And who takes a photo that way? And who is taking the picture? And for what reason? Oh, oh. right. Like it's weird, but also the couch. The couches are weird. <laughs> I just noticed, like <laughs> the couches are weird. I just noticed it. It does look like two different couches. And how come she's looking at you and you're looking at the camera? Like this oh, isn't. That but makes sense. Also, the overall tone of this is very much like, look at this incredible Stepford wife that I have, who does all these things and makes my yeah, life better it, in so many ways. It looks all like I the have picture do... on the front of a, a pamphlet for a, a white super mega church. Yes, yeah. it does. Uh, yes. Yes, it is fully given that. And I wouldn't be surprised if Chris Pratt did start his own church at some point. Like, not at all. But the the really awful, you know, like asking for I'm, money. I'm a I'm a husband and I do the bare minimum and that's real love. And that's the greatest thing in the world. That aside, this line about a gorgeous, healthy daughter is what really pissed a lot of people off because um as a lot of you already know, Chris Pratt was married before to Anna Ferris, who is absolutely hilarious. Yes, she is. Um, and seems to be great. And they have a son, Jack. Jack was born with several um, health conditions. He had, um, I think, an issue, a problem with his heart. He had some hernia surgeries. I did not know all this. Some surgeries on his eyes. Again, an absolutely adorable little boy. So sweet. Like, he just looks... Uh, you know what he looks like? He looks like an innocent, precious child, which is exactly what he is. And I'm sure the same can be said for your daughter. But I don't know how you as a father can say something like that, knowing that you have a child who is older, who has health issues, who may also see this one day. I really don't see how you can be like, wow, this white woman that I have now, all the things she's done for me, the way she makes everything so much better. And then the fact that she also gave me this gorgeous, healthy daughter, I just couldn't ask for anything more. Like there's nothing wrong with your son because he has health issues. That doesn't make him <laughs> a mean, less desirable child. No, I mean, it doesn't. Like the, it, there's, you're not, the little boy is not less valuable because of health concerns. And I just feel like oh, if you... No, knowing that you have a child with chronic health issues, for you to then turn around and be like, oh, well, this woman, she gave me a healthy daughter and I just love her for that. It absolutely rubbed me the wrong fucking way. Like I said, I stay out of white business. I really try not to get too involved in what the fuck is going on over there. But I found that to be absolutely disgusting. I'm not going to cave for Chris Bratt because he creeps me out, to be honest. With Leave you. it alone. So I'm just no, I'm sorry. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I do. Because everything else about Chris Pratt leads me to feel like this is ableist. I loved Andy Dwyer. Loved, I did too. Loved and I have to remind Peter myself Quill. that this is not Andy Dwyer. It isn't. And the I mean, weirdo yeah. Christian bullshit that he's been doing lately. I'm just saying the progression of Chris Pratt over the past several years leads me to feel like this isn't some innocent throwaway comment like so many people do. Like, oh, my God, beautiful, healthy baby. We couldn't be happier. I just it feels more pointed than that to me because of his evolution, for lack of a better word, over the past several years. So I just found it truly disgusting. And I wanted to say officially on the record, fuck Chris Pratt. Um, I, he posted some video on Instagram about how the backlash made him so sad and he didn't even want to work out, but he put on his Christian rock playlist and went out and ran and then he felt so much better. So to God be the glory. I'm just like, girl, go to hell. So nothing about, wow, I can see how this was misconstrued or you guys really got the wrong impression about what I said about my son. I adore my son. He's amazing. My, both of my children are gifts from God. Nothing like that. Just, wow, you guys were being meanies. So I had to turn on my my playlist and go run in the woods and inhale the, the pine trees. And then I felt all better. Girl, fuck you. 
Mm -hmm. I'm sure that little boy and his mama are better off with you being wherever you are at and away from them. I hope you have as little contact with him as possible if that's how you feel about him. Truly fuck you to the ends of the earth. And that's Mm -hmm. it. I'm done. Like I said, in and out. Um... I just feel like anybody else could be Mario and Garfield, honestly. But now that I don't that even know, sucks. <laughs> why is he voicing Mario? Money or Garfield? Garfield, Money. you know what? Fuck Chris Pratt. Fuck Chris Pratt. The the least valuable of the Chris's to me. I know when the going to be like his movies actually gross. I don't care. Fuck him. Go to hell. <gasps> TMZ just said Stevie J is filing for divorce from uh, Faith. <laughs> well, interesting. Inter- let me close this down. So uh, let it. Stevie J file Mm-mm. from divorce from me. Wait, this would be the first divorce? Stevie J, this was the first time he got married? Yeah, I think so. Why did I assume he was married to somebody? Not jo- He didn't marry Jocelyn? I don't think they were married. No, clearly long. not. Okay, well, anyway, fuck Chris Pratt, and I'm done. Okay, for me this week, um, I also don't have too much to say. I'm not going to waste too much time. I just want to um, address two quick things. First of all, um, Lawrence and Convection Oven, I'm tired. How did I know? I am so tired y'all drove me into the soil on yesterday like (laughs) who do i even begin with both y'all so goddamn aggravating let's start you know what i'm gonna start with condensed milk because you like the other one is he the nerve so i feel like i have a little bit more for him so i'm gonna just say for you okay sis can the nigga hold the baby like i don't even understand like mama i get it because (laughs) you're you're tight who does he think that he is where was this nigga? He feel like this, that, and the third. He can just come around here and whatever, whatever. And so, like, I understand you standing your ground. You know, your sister Kiki is here with her sickening cornrows. Layla Rashawn is your mama. That's a that's um a battlefield. You know what I mean? <laughs> mama came around the corner into the hospital room and saw Layla and Kiki and, and gagged as he should have. I did. <laughs> Meaning my baby, but. Can the nigga hold the goddamn baby? At some point, you have to shake off some of that goddamn sour, that that extra. You know, when you go and get like um, sour, quote unquote, sour versions of candy and they just put like sugar on the top of sour, it. Yeah. Shake that yeah. sour sugar shit off of it, honey, and get back <laughs> to you. You name the baby Mustafa um, Jebediah Freeman, whatever the fuck the baby name is or whatever. <laughs> he, you know, swallowed that one. Okay. To. You told him when, of course, <laughs> I'm not saying he shouldn't have. You told him when and where the baptism was going to be. Swallow that one. Mama almost swung on people and shit like that, but <laughs> everybody had it out. Can the nigga hold the goddamn baby? You're so fucking bitter about how Ooh. disgusting that this nigga was, but you're still so, like, I guess, determined to be around him that you are, like, you don't even seem to be realizing that you're just controlling shit to a degree that you don't have to because you could easily just tell him to fuck off into the goddamn sunset and see his ass in the courtroom. Could you not? Man, you could. It'd be a shame because this baby is like six weeks old, but yeah, you could. She'll be all right. She's six weeks old. <laughs> Tiffany husband talking about something. The baby can feel that energy. You know what the baby can feel? Baby the can. warmth of a of a tit when he is hungry. Oh, yeah. That too. No, I'm sure the baby can't feel that energy. But my whole thing yeah. is, bitch, if you, you don't like him. No. <laughs> Should not have had his baby. The nigga 
draws yes. breath and you look <laughs> exhausted she and inconvenient. So, over it. <laughs> so tell him to really fuck off. Why the fuck did you ask that. Mama to meet you down at Simone's uh, birthday party? For the fuck what? You don't like her. And then as soon as this nigga picked the baby up, uh, give me my baby. You getting on my damn nerves. You aggravating. Now move to the side so I can address this one. <laughs> Who the fuck do you think that you are, Lawrence? Niggas. Niggas. I have been tired of you since that Best Buy polo. But now... Since you've got a cardigan budget, okay, <laughs> and some Argyle socks, you feel like you're not that fuckboy from way back when. See, they've been told you, and it seems as though you haven't stuck on to the fact that you are a fuck nigga, and you are not graduated. Nigga, you found out that you had a baby on the way that you didn't fucking want, weren't planning for, and hit the road jack you didn't come back no more <laughs> let her be pregnant in LA by herself by <laughs> to her damn on a whole date okay. on a whole date okay. talking about some I, I think my baby is being born <laughs> Elijah just eyes just adjusting to the motherfucking lamps at home and you talking about some you have a right. Bitch, are you out of your ever loving goddamn black ass mind hoe? You better fall in line. <laughs> Ask what can I bring to the function? Woo! <laughs> Putting that crib together Earn like the a dollar purse. don't let you take that newborn. You I was so glad. Bitch, are you what? (laughs) She knows that the motherfucker can't do that. She knows what carrots and whatever the fuck can be in his his bottle and whatnot. Because she probably spent all nine of those goddamn months reading about it. Learning how to do it. Why am I yelling? Mm. See, and see, Grant is probably like, I test the mics. Yeah, I do that on purpose. And the I mic. say, and I ask yell. you to yell yeah. as yeah. loud as possible so that we don't. Mm-hmm. And, and what I'm do like, you do? I'm like, you I'm literally it. just like, hey, <laughs> this is me yelling. All right, I'm not gonna get any. Not louder gonna get that. any louder. No, I'm really this week. I'm really no, I'm not, not gonna, gonna get louder. I'm not gonna scream. I don't scream. I'm and not a screaming person. And then what do you do? I forgot I was talking about this episode this week. <laughs> It was a lot. It was. It was a lot. Bitch, you felt like because Issa left your ass without a word. As she should have. As she should have. A queen. Issa basically bird man hand rubbed and was like, mm-hmm. Yeah. I was so happy for my girl. She avoided all that shit. And so you were like, oh, how do I, you know what I mean, evolve into that next level bad bitch? Yeah. I have a baby now. I shall be the dad. And that comes with decision making and being a part of the conglomerate. <laughs> this pose. You better ask what size sock that baby wear or whatever the fuck that shit is. What, however that shit works, ask motherfucker what size um baby Jordans do you get for six weeks old for six for mm. six weeks? Yeah, that's what you do. You go on down to the Oshkosh as well as the Bagosh, and you go get everything that they have. For um, puss to 12 months. I don't know how. I don't know anything about kids. But you go into the section puss that says puss to six. to well, Puss to three it's months. Birth. It's birth. It's birth. It's just birth. Okay. Birth to three months. <laughs> or to 
12 weeks. It's normally That's... three months, but yeah, it is. You're right. You got it. That's the math. It's mathing. And then you buy that. See, you know just about as much as I do about raising a goddamn baby, going into parking lots and telling people what they should be doing with their motherfucking time. And and I was so glad that they did that split that split screen shit too, because Mm -hmm. it was like, let's really get into it. Because while yes, compact disc also gets on my everlasting gob stopping goddamn nerves. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Definitely. Niggas really be like, oh, well, she don't understand, and she don't let me do this, and I don't even understand what she's doing. And then, meanwhile, she is, like, pissing and right. breastfeeding at 5 o'clock in the morning, hasn't slept right. in weeks, and you're knee-deep in fresh puss and waiting yep. for, like, a, a job promotion or something like that, complaining and asking this bitch where her goddamn problem is. When I tell you, when I saw that turbulence, I was like, finally, now's the time! <laughs> Get him out of here! Now's the time! <laughs> but, of course, it was just like, teach him a lesson and make him think differently or whatever. And then they got back on the phone. Aggravating! Just aggravating. Both of y'all get on my damn nerves. Oh, Yeah. I mean, you're going to have to figure it out. I think everybody saw this coming when when Condola decided to keep the baby. This this is new parents and adjustments and stress and all that. It was going to be messy, but <laughs> I just don't know how you sit up here talking about how you, you want to have a say-so and you want to have influence and such over all these decisions. When you left, you left. Like you literally left in during my pregnancy. So how was I supposed to interpret that? <laughs> Talking about keep me posted. What happened to keep me posted? Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> A mess, both of them. Again, I was just very it glad was for Issa. So hard. It's I was happy for Issa. Who same. did not have to who was not in the whole episode. Cause that would that bullshit, none of her business. Beautiful, beautiful. I love Burr. when shows will take a character, especially if it's not a character that I like. If it's a character I don't despise, like there was no way you were going to give me another side of Joffrey Baratheon. I would, like, I don't give a fuck. Like right. they tried it with Cersei, and it didn't work. It didn't. It didn't. It did not work. It did not work. Um, but. I love when they take characters like Condola and they show like they give me more layers to them and you know give show me other sides. And ultimately, she was still aggravating as all fuck, as all fuck. As I said, oh, yeah. far too controlling, very clearly pissed, making all the wrong decisions. Tell that nigga to kick bricks. You don't have to be nice to this bitch. Just because I mean, like, for, but anyway, <laughs> it was just like who the fuck. Do you think you are both of y'all? I'm just we gonna pray for Issa. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, do that. Do. I'm gonna leave it right there. Y'all do that. Pray for her. Cause she got dick on the table and crying instead. So everybody has problems. <laughs> you should have seen my motherfucking face. I I mean honestly, I've been waiting for y'all to see this episode because I knew. <laughs> The way that she asked him to stay over and he was like, oh, all right. I literally did like the Cupid shuffle. I was so excited. Yes, get mm-hmm. some. And then. And then. It was a hard day. She had a hard day. Dick not on the menu tonight. Crunch on. You, y'all, just, y'all just keep tuning in. Just continue to Shut in. up. Because first of all, <laughs> like. Just- I'm just saying. Well, I cannot say nothing because I we know, know you. bitch. Like, yes. I know. So I'm just like trying to be a part of the conversation without saying something I can't say. Girl, anyway, so the other thing that I was going to say this week is that I was at the Target earlier um, buying my personals. And um, I came across something <laughs> in the toilet. What are your personals? <laughs> I would love to know. Because when I say personals, I mean like tampons, I know, money bags. I said it. You make me so sick. <laughs> you make me so sick. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, I love that term. It's so funny. Nobody even says that anymore. Does anybody still say personals except people that like grew up in the 90s? I don't know. Anyways. I have no idea. Right. So I was at Target and um, I was buying like, like flushable wipes. And Thank I saw you. a brand... <laughs> Because I think that's for all adults here. I saw there, um, I was introduced to a brand called Dude Wipes. Um, I'm. What? <laughs> what is that? A wipe for men? They're just I'm... booty wipes. Uh, wait, just are, booty are wipes. Flush- are flushable wipes feminine? What is this? What are we doing here? And the fucking description on the back said some dumb shit too, like whether you had a a burrito or something. So it was just so bro. It's like, do we really have to like market wiping our asses with a moist cloth? Yeah. To to yeah. straight guys, to dudes and bros. Wow. Are y'all okay? I Googled it. They have a dude bidet. <laughs> As opposed to a girl bidet. What? <gasps> this is ridiculous. Men are so stupid. <laughs> it's like like guy lights rather than just calling them high. Like highlights, yeah. Giving it a fucking, you know. Sunday night football ass term doesn't change the fact that you're bleaching your hair and flushing your ass. It doesn't. And the the thing that I feel like we need to stand in as a human race is the fact that y'all are weird if you think that there's anything wrong with any of these things or that we have to like that like masculinity is so fragile that you literally needed somebody to make the same shit as Charmin Cottonell. Honey, whoever the fuck else makes right. ass wipes, but one called dude Everybody. specifically for you. If you buy those, you know what? I'm not wow. even going to like, I'm not even going to get into the specifics for these undoubtedly white company sues me or says whatever. I mean, I don't know how you would have a case, but I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> y'all are, are dead strange. Ass with this. Um, <laughs> they have all, they have a dude powder. <laughs> You know, you can just use the things that exist already. You don't have to. This is so bizarre. If you go into this nigga's bathroom and you see a pack of dude wipes, and I want to know. They look more expensive than the regular. They, they, they cost more. I want to know if you went back and why. Because if I see dude wipes in a nigga's bathroom, it's going to be the last time I go to his home. Wow. Just wipe your ass. I'm... Like, <laughs> and here's the thing. Thank you for I doing cannot. that because you're doing a lot more than many dudes. But what I'm not going to do is pull out a sheet of cookies for you, bitch. Dude wipes. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm reading this website and I just savior. cannot believe this. This is so crazy. Like the rest of us are just buying the regular unscented flushable wipes, girl. Please like I don't do think not I've tag even... them in anything with me because I don't want to talk to them. And I don't oh, want them yes. to talk to me. And I don't want you to talk to me about them. It's yes. not even about this particular company because there are so many things like this. I just think that it is so strange. That niggas need basic things to be rebranded in a quote, like a a dude, bro, masculine, macho way for you to guess, I guess, feel more comfortable with it. And that's so weird. (laughs) But you know what? I guess at the same time, while I await the end of days, I will say, um, call it dude wipes, douche wipes. Dandy wipes, whatever the fuck. I'm just glad you're wiping. You I was going to say, on the other hand, if this is helping y'all to wipe your asses, then good. 
Yeah. But it shouldn't, you know, these products already existed. And mm. so... You just do it. <laughs> you could just... You just do it. <laughs> you could just do it. And that would be fine as well. So, yeah. good luck to everybody involved, y'all. And on that note, I have seen whatever lesbian thing you're about to tag me in, I've seen it. If dykes are involved, I've seen it. Young and May's involved, I've seen it. I've seen it. Thank you so much. I've Is seen that it. one last one you just wanted to tag in, tag on there? Well, you haven't seen the one with her and Halle Berry? Oh. I've seen yeah. a lot of gay shit with Halle Berry because she's in a movie where she's playing a UFC fighter and I don't even believe she's gay in the movie. <laughs> Well, she's like hanging all over young M.A. talking about this, my baby. And of course, M.A. is over there like can barely even stand up <laughs> with the How do you pure joy of this moment. <laughs> as a living stud. No, you can't. You can't. You can't. What? All of them wanted to be her so bad in that moment. <laughs> you know when she kissed all Lena? What? Oh, she you did. You she kissed Lena away at, like, I, at an yes. award show or something like yes. that? Yes, they made a movie together, did, um, a TV show. I think they 20s did Boomerang maybe? together. Boomerang, the Boomerang yeah, that's what it was. I think they worked on yeah. together. Yep, 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 yep. And again, so again, she got all gay the looks better than Hallie. But I think Gay looks <laughs> she better than women. She need to quit playing because one, <laughs> one of them girls would absolutely swoop up and change her life. She needs to quit playing. Stop teasing these young men because they're ready. But yes, whatever lesbian thing is on the internet, I've seen it. Thank you so much for <laughs> the updates. But I've seen it. Yeah. All right. Well, <sighs> that's it for me. Okay. All right. Well, that is going to wrap up this week's episode of the show. Make sure you check us out at thisistheread.com and on social media at this is the read. Um, yeah, I don't think I have any other news this week. Stay black, protect your magic. Um, yeah. And take care of yourselves. Yeah. And start by, I don't know, not paying the rent. Of a lazy, shitless right. ass white right. man <laughs> that has a family already with money. Love yourself. Choose you. In 2022, choose you. Ooh, you are at down. home with a white man that has Woo. the ability to pay his own goddamn way, but would rather play Super Fucking Smash Brothers and you're paying her rent, dear miss bitch. Mm-mm. This is what we're doing as blacks? And the gays be just trying to help y'all, love y'all, care about y'all. And you want to silence try. us. I'm going home. Try it. Just like Summer Walker, she said they tried to warn me. Try it. An but album. Mm. It's good. Mm. It's good. An album. It's tragic, though. It that is, fourth especially baby mama because song. we know London's getting a, a check off of it as well. So where is the last one? Right. Exactly. But that fourth baby, it's like, girl, I, honestly, after listening girl. to fourth baby mama, I feel like you fold if you take a single dime from that album. <laughs> because she said, let me start with your mama. With your mama And spend a verse dragging her. And then, like... <laughs> It's good. Music. It's sad. It took it took me back to my ghetto ass twenties, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. There's something so. very Mary J. Blige esque about it. Uh-oh. Um, yeah. just in um the fact that it's pain. The yeah, <laughs> and pain. A beautiful result of something heartbreaking. Oh, you know? the baby. Right, 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 right. I was talking about the music, but that too. Oh! I was talking about the album. <laughs> like, it's comparison. That's the comparison to Ma- Mary. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I got some you. Of people's yes. favorite Mary albums and stuff. We're That's the now. only comparison. Yep. Got you. Yes. <laughs> so. Ho, all right, hoes. Take care, and we will see y'all next week. 